to be here with you all. Thanks for joining with us on this Friday evening. I am grateful that each of you took some time out of your busy schedules and very full lives to, to join with us tonight. First and foremost, as we begin, and in the spirit of peace building, I want to draw your attention to this space and where we have gathered this evening. Here in Whatcom County, we are occupying the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples, who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascades watershed from time immemorial. I want to express the deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack Tribe, for their enduring care and protection of this land. And I offer this acknowledgement not as a replacement for building authentic relationships, but as the first step in honoring their relationship with the land we all share and a call towards further learning and action. So thank you all for joining with me in this reflection and acknowledgement. One area of reflection that I've been sitting with more, more deeply lately, in all honesty and transparency, is seeking places and spaces for autonomy. There is so much in this world over which we don't have control. Yet one area that continues to crystallize for me is that we have choice in how we approach conflict, individually and collectively. And at the same time, as you all well know, we live in a complex environment. And it is the strength of our social fabric that helps us navigate this complexity in a healthy way when conflict arises. The presence or the absence of conflict is not a measure of our community health. Rather, I believe that the measure lies within how we choose to navigate that conflict and through that conflict. And the choice in that navigation lies in our ability to change our own perceptions, to our ability to choose what filters we apply when listening to another, our ability to challenge and shift our implicit biases, and our ability to show up as peace builders, to live in a space of curiosity and compassion, to invite creativity, to practice humility, to embrace patience, to inspire connection. Each of these capabilities are what create our social fabric. Each of these capabilities, when intentionally nourished and when thoughtfully used, are what guides us to build a strong, resilient, and interwoven community, a peaceful and a healthy community. And we're doing it. Tonight is an opportunity to celebrate community members that are building peace in ways that are congruent with our mission. And it's also an opportunity to support the Dispute Resolution Center and to stand with us in service to our community. So I truly thank each of you for being here tonight. So this truly is a special evening. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful energy that you've brought to this event tonight. It's really fabulous. It's a little bit hard uh, to believe for me that we are here celebrating the 17th annual awards gala. And yeah, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> so after 27 years of providing and promoting constructive and collaborative approaches to conflict, we are most certainly aware that the community in which we live plays a critical role in the advancement of our mission. And the Peace Builder Awards have become one of the most visible ways that we as an organization can acknowledge the efforts of individuals, other organizations, and businesses that are contributing to a more peaceful community. And it is these award recipients, as you'll soon see, that remind us of how accessible the act of peace building truly is and how integrated it can be into our daily lives and actions. Each year, this event has grown significantly, and in tandem, the selection process for our award recipients has become more and more difficult. 
And once again this past year, we received an overwhelming number of powerful nominations, making this both a challenging and inspiring decision-making process. Our selection committee grappled with determining who we would recognize and which peace builders most closely and most creatively embodied our vision, mission, and values. And we are so pleased tonight to be able to recognize the outstanding individuals and programs in eight categories this evening. I also want to acknowledge again the crew at Bellingham Television, Ben and DJ, for their time and skill invested in creating videos that you'll be able to see about each recipient. But before we begin with those awards, I also must acknowledge that we're celebrating the seventh annual Youth Poetry Contest. Village Books has been a steadfast sponsor of this part of our event, and we appreciate them deeply for that. We invite young people in grades K through 12 to submit poems about peace or other aspects of conflict resolution. This year, we received over 50 incredible submissions from young people all throughout Whatcom County and five students were of varying grade levels were selected, and we'll get to hear their poems throughout the evening. So are you ready for the program to begin? Okay, great. <laughs> so it is my absolute honor to start off this evening's program with our youngest poet at six years old, um, Margot Barber is going to come on up. She is ready and raring to go. Different. Different could be hair, different could be eyes, different could be faces, different could be you or me. Thank you, Margot. I love that she's memorized it and she was ready to go. Our first award recipient for our first Peace Builder Award tonight is Peace Wizard. <laughs> So our first recipient might be a familiar face to many of you, because over the last 20 years, he has dedicated his life to spreading the simple but powerful message of peace. Carrying a peace sign wherever he goes, Peace Wizard is an inspiration to our community. I'll invite him up to the stage now and invite you all to watch a video about him. Thank you. I think it uh, makes people happy. I see people approaching me in their car or on their bicycles or walking and they've got a frown on their face and they look up and see this peace sign and they start smiling. And I've had people come up to me and tell me, you know, I was really feeling really bad today and seeing that peace sign changed the whole thing. I thought it was a mistake to go into Iraq, and so I made myself a uh, peace sign out of cardboard. The more I walked with that peace sign, the better I felt. Buildings start with tiny little substances. Peace building is just doing one little peace act uh, at a time. You just do one little brick at a time, and you have many people doing those little things and pretty soon you've got a whole picture of, of peace pervading the culture, uh, humanity. The more I get this sign out, uh, the more people see it, more people start thinking about peace and maybe, you know, it'll lead them towards peace. My vision for Whatcom County is one primarily of peace and where uh, people are able to walk the streets fr freely. There's nobody, nobody on the street that's homeless or in need, you know. Everybody's needs are, are met, uh, and we, we do a good job of uh, protecting the environment. It's, 
my honor to present Wizard with the Peace Builder Award. Congratulations. I'm going to sing you a song. <laughs> Peace, love, joy, truth, good health, happiness, kindness, generosity, gratitude, compassion, empathy, fairness, justice, patience, serenity, forbearance, forgiveness, freedom, beauty, Wisdom, contentment, consciousness, courage, respect, responsibility, enlightenment of humanity. Thank you, wizard. <laughs> it takes an entire community to build peace, one, one person at a time. The next award that we have to offer this evening is an award for our public service category, and it's being given this evening to the Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force. So <laughs> the Public Service Award goes to this 30-person group of elected officials, representatives from mental health and criminal justice systems, nonprofit staff, and concerned citizens. Formed over four years ago, the task force serves as a connector between people and priorities that are often siloed. And I've had the opportunity to witness this collaboration firsthand, and it's quite powerful. Working in tandem to make the criminal justice system stronger and more equitable. As of July 2019, the work of the task force has helped to reduce the local jail population by 15%, which is remarkable. <laughs> So I would like to invite a representative from the task force to join me up here to receive the award and for you all to join with us as we watch a video about them. Why are we locking so many people up? Why are we spending so much money on jails and incarceration? How can we do it better? How can we save money? How can we have better outcomes for our citizens and improve the, the entire system? The Whatcom County Council created the task force because we were in the midst of a large and wide-ranging debate about a new jail complex. That was gonna be very expensive to build and to operate. And it became clear to us that there were a lot of voices in the community that weren't incorporated into the discussion. The council in its wisdom realized let's bring together a diverse set of stakeholders and assign them this task. Let's figure out how we can improve our criminal justice system, get better results for our money, and be part of the, the national trend of criminal justice reform. We wanted to improve the ability of folks suffering from addiction to have a, a, a place to go, as well as people in short-term mental health crisis, a place to go. That was one of the main goals of the task force. So I'm pleased to announce that we will be breaking ground on a $12 million facility that's fully funded, that'll have 16 beds for uh, substance abuse, 16 beds for mental health respite, which is a huge improvement on the previous resources. 
when we incarcerate people, it has devastating consequences on their lives. It often takes them months, years, or longer to recover. So I, I feel like the, the greatest peace that it brings to the community is the lack of chaos and trauma that naturally happens by avoiding uh, locking people up unless that's absolutely what needs to happen. They want meaningful work, they want safe schools and safe streets and a place where their kids can grow up and play. The task force is helping people achieve that vision of making Whatcom County more livable, more prosperous, more peaceful, and uh, I think we all share that vision. So it's my honor to introduce Jack Hovenier, who's currently co-chair of the task force, Deborah Hawley, and Eric Ritchie, members of the task force. Congratulations. I'd like to say that Deborah and Eric and I practice a beautiful song. We did not. <laughs> that was wonderful and beautiful. Uh, but I do want to... Uh, acknowledge uh, there's, there's so many people that are part of the task force. Really, we've got Deborah and Eric here tonight, but there really should be 30 people. And I want to acknowledge the, my co-chair, Stephen Gockley, and Joel Bernstein, the former chair, sitting there. And there's others in the room. Thank you. The task force is one of those unique government-created things that has created a space where the people, stakeholders, voices that can make a difference come together and have a meaningful dialogue. And as a result, we've had results. And when I say we, it's really a lot bigger than the task force. It's the criminal justice system. It's the pressure on the mental health system. It's the coordination between the prosecutor and the sheriff and the small town uh, administrations. It's all those things together. And it's really been exciting to be part of that and to watch some actual changes. I, I won't get into my own story. I looked pretty good in a tie up on the screen, but you know, I, I was one of those people that I guess didn't benefit from not having some of those systems and knows what it's like to not avoid incarceration. If you want to know more, you can catch me at a break. Uh, so with that, I just want to thank the task force, thank the community, and thank you to Whatcom Dispute Resolution for giving us a platform to communicate with everyone the wonderful things that are happening. And uh, I was asked how the task force helps promote peace. You heard the answer that I gave about trauma and how that helps. And my goal is like the gentleman with the peace sign, that peace prevail in Whatcom County. Thank you. We get to hear another poem now. Will Annie Nelson please, oh, you're right there, you're so ready. Here you are, Annie. Okay, come on up. This is Annie Nelson. My name is Annie Nelson and I'll be reading The Sacred Sea. The silent oak tree sits next to me as I breathe in the soft breeze. The sun reflects on the water as if an angel has gracefully walked upon it. I see boats float through the vast deep sea. Their magnificent sails sway through the clouds. I feel as though the world is glowing and my heart starts beating with happiness. Am I the only one who sees how heavenly the scenery is? The sea is bursting with love and the world embraces me. I feel the soft grass graze my bare feet. I see pure beauty revolving around me. I smell the intense but wonderful salt water flowing gently. I hear the rush of waves crashing just beyond me. 
I taste the cooling air traveling inside me. How lucky am I to be experiencing this miracle of beauty. How precious this planet is. had the opportunity to talk with Annie about the inspiration for that and that just came from an experience that she had in soaking in the environment that she was in and I just thought that was an amazing description of the space that she was able to experience. So thank you for sharing that with us, Annie. So we have the opportunity now to give another award in the environment category. So this next award goes to David Roberts and Colshan Services. So, <laughs> so David, as the recipient of our environment award, has 35 years of experience working on sustainability, climate change, and ecosystem protection and restoration. The founder and owner of Colshan Services, David brings people together, builds relationships, engages with empathy, makes space for creativity, and strives to identify what he calls multiple benefit outcomes. I like the sound of that personally. By providing opportunities for people to think critically about complex issues and by promoting understanding and collaboration, David is building a more resilient community. So I'd like to invite David to join us up here and all of us to watch a video about him to learn a little bit more. Thank you. When I can assemble the right people, give them the right information, a little nudge in a certain direction, and suddenly they go, oh my gosh. There's the answer, and that's what makes life totally satisfying for me. Colson Services is a consulting firm that um, helps people in a variety of different ways address environmental and sustainability issues. Uh, we've been around since 2011. For the last 35 years or so, I've been focused on uh, processes associated with watershed protection, land use, climate change and sustainability. I think a lot of people have issues that um, need to get addressed and many don't know how to work together. So a big part of what I do is show people how they can communicate better together, how they can learn together and ultimately create better results. I think that this helps build a more peaceful place in Whatcom County by just giving people the tools to be able to communicate together, to negotiate outcomes together, and ultimately to seek more beneficial outcomes that everybody can live with. I would like to see Whatcom County become a much more resilient and understanding community. Um, I think we have an urban, community in Whatcom County and we have a rural community in Whatcom County and ultimately I would like to see us all have a better understanding of the importance of each other and how we can better serve each other in the long term. Thank you all. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor to receive this recognition. Um, said a lot of things up there already, but I wanted to mention just how important the people are that I work with to me. Um, they many have become friends and certainly I've had the opportunity to learn amazing things from people's stories and from their challenges and that's really made my life uh, a lot richer. Um, the world is increasingly a complicated place and uh, fear has become the um, motivating force behind a lot of the divisiveness that we see right now. 
yet there are many signs that things are changing and there's hope out there um, borne out in many of the communities that I've worked in as well as what I see around the world. So I hope to continue to be a part of that and I thank you all very much for this acknowledgement. Congratulations, David. So our next award is going to honor and is in celebration of the 2019 Paddle to Lummi. So 12 years ago, uh, several tribal members were recognized for their specific role with Paddle to Lummi with a Peace Builder Award. This year's award has a different focus and is being given to the Lummi tribe itself the collaboration and community engagement driving the 2019 Paddle to Lummi and the widespread generosity it inspired was truly unprecedented and incredibly powerful. With this community award, we are honoring Lummi for hosting the canoe journey and we're recognizing everyone who played a part in creating such a remarkable and accessible and powerful celebration. So congratulations. And if the chairman could join me and council member can join me um, up on stage and we'll have an opportunity to learn a little bit more about this award. Thank you. Our community were asking for healing. And we invited all the Canoe families to come here and share their prayers, share their songs, share their dances, and share their time with us. The theme for the Paddle to Lummi 2019 was a few things. One was bringing our children home. For many decades, our children get stuck in the system, stuck in the state system. So for us, it's really important to work on that, work on keeping our children here at home with our families. The environment, um, many may see us fighting the battle to restore the Salish Sea within the Salish Sea, the Quithalmachtin, the killer whale, and for us being the people in the Salish Sea, um, you know, it's our duty, it's our responsibility, so that was an important theme. Third was the opioid crisis. We declared a public health crisis about a year and a half, close to two years ago, and we're still fighting that fight. The Paddle to Lummi, it, it's a peaceful gathering. It's a peaceful time. It brings people together. It brings communities together. I think it reaches and touches the soul of so many, but here in particular with Lummi and Whatcom County, I think we witnessed what we hope to witness in the future, and that's a coming together. We're not divided communities. We are. We should be one. We should be partners. We should be neighbors. And. And I think uh, the Paddle to Lummi 2019 really showed that we can come together. We can break bread together. We can share songs together. We can share culture together, really tell our story. And I think it sheds light on what the future could look like as a partnership. Siam, Nestelacha, Siam, Eats at Salaluk, Eats at Siathlum, Heichka, Heichka Quinnesinat Tacho, Eats Ayats and Tlats at Tien Aquilia, Eats Suits in Ohiluk, Quinnes Lang Nuch, Tien Nestelacha. Dear friends, relatives, just thanking each and every one of you and really honored and thankful to receive this uh, recognition also. And I wanna, wanted to uh, ask Selena to leave a few words also, but I'm just really thankful. I'll let Selena say a few words. Hi, Chikasia. Good evening. Uh, thank you uh, definitely for this, just this acknowledgement and congratulations to all the other award winners. Um, you know, I think something that really struck me throughout this process of planning uh, for the paddle was just 
the togetherness that it brought and how we all had a common goal towards achieving something for our people. Because in a lot of ways, like as the video said, this was about healing. This was about healing for our community. And um, I didn't realize until I was right in the mix of things how much that community really extended to everyone in Whatcom County. Um, I had a lot of friends that were very curious about what Paddle to Lummi was. And in my own head, I think I was really focused on Lummi and our relatives that we had coming from other nations. But I, had, I met so many people that came to experience what this was. And I think it was so important for them to get a, you know, a better understanding of who we are as a people. And I thank you, Moonwater, for the acknowledge, acknowledgement of this being our traditional homelands because it is, and, and I think that being a good neighbor and just being good partners and everything is something that we all really strive for in working together because on a human level, we are human. And the better that we can do together is the better for all of us. So, Haishka, and again, congratulations to all the other award winners, and thank you to everyone that helped make Paddle happen, and thank you to everyone that volunteered or donated items or helped coordinate that. Just thank you so much. We have the opportunity now to hear from another young poet. Bryn Bergman is going to join us to read her poem. So Bryn, come on up. The Opposite of Peace. Imagine ashes instead of snow. Picture fires instead of rain. Think of bones and blood and bags of trash floating through the wind. Bring to mind empty rooms and broken walls, roofs that have fallen in, vacant streets and lonely buildings, homes that have long been forgotten, products of war, results of dividedness, a future we caused. Unless, imagine waves of water instead of garbage. Picture trees instead of skyscrapers. Think of people walking, smiling, living, dancing in the wind. Bring to mind crowded rooms and windows, roofs with happy people beneath them. Busy streets and buildings filled with workers. Homes that make room for everyone. Isn't that the future we want? Isn't that peace? Thank you. I just like to take a moment to acknowledge it's uh, there's 300 of you in this room and I think our, our youth poets and, and our award recipients, our youth poets are doing an amazing job of coming up and reading their poetry and sharing their words in front of such a large group of people. So I appreciate their courage in doing so. So we have the opportunity now to um, give another award to in the volunteer category. So this year's volunteer award is going to Anne and Pug Edmonds, who have worked tirelessly over the last 12 years to build trust, collaboration, and a sense of common values among volunteers, community members, and partner organizations. Among their many commitments, Anne and Pug lead the alms ministry at St. Paul's Episcopal Church, and thanks to them, different faith communities have forged productive working relationships, and hundreds of people in Whatcom County have accessed such needed assistance in the last year alone. So it's my pleasure to be able to provide this award to them. Please join me as we learn a little bit more about them. Thank you.
people go out differently than they come in. You are here, we are glad, what can we do? The alms ministry provides small amounts of financial assistance to people seeking help. Small amounts are average $40. We see a thousand people a year, maybe 60% of them get some sort of financial assistance. But the more important thing about the alms ministry is that they listen. People come in and they're listened to what they need, what is bothering them. We think of it as a ministry of presence. We're, we're there to people. It's a time for people to really tell their story. And they may come in saying, oh, what I want is help with you know, some big, huge utility bill or some big, huge future project. And what they end up um, thinking about is what they really need, which is a connection to other people, perhaps, or a ticket back home, or a chance to sort out what steps they need to go through to get to their next goal. We've built a network of five or six churches where uh, someone who has a larger uh, need can get pledges from uh, the churches and we can fill that larger need that any one of the churches would not have been able to fill. And that collaboration is one of the things that I'm most pleased about. Each person that comes in is in their own mind in some sort of crisis. It's up to us to make them feel welcomed and listened to. Congratulations, Anne and Pablo. Well, I want to say thank you, particularly to St. Paul's people who have supported us, the Reverend jo Jonathan Weldon and Myra Co uh, Reinhardt Corcoran, who has supported the communications, and the volunteers. And we wanted to thank the whole community. Uh, we're fairly new to Bellingham, and it's a phenomenal community with the participation and the desire for connection that we see with all sorts of diversity. And it is really like building a garland of peace. Um, each person connects with each other person until there is like a smile from that children's song of peace around the world. So. We feel very um, honored to be here and very grateful to be part of this community. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. So this next award is our Youth Award. There is honesty, wisdom, and hope living within the hearts of our next award recipients. I am in awe of their courage and deeply appreciative of their thoughtful and inspiring action. As a community, we need to work together to solve our most challenging issues. And these young people are inviting all of us into a critical conversation. I'm honored to recognize the Upstanders United Group with the Peace Builder Youth Award. Let's listen and learn more. We're just a group of high schoolers trying to make the world a better place make our community a more just safe and accepting place. We bring awareness to different problems that our society faces. We deal mostly with mental health, self-care, and relationship issues and relationship health. We started when a representative named Liz from DB Sauce came and started helping us more on the relationship side of things, but eventually over time we grew to also encompass the mental health aspect. We do assemblies, we do small meetings with classes, and we go to different events and try to get as much information as we can to spread within the student body. Last year we worked with Safe Bay to put on a consent event and we got people from all the schools around Whatcom County, and we just had the entire day to kind of bring awareness to sexual harassment and bring awareness to how important consent is in different 
signs of consent that I feel not a whole lot of people know nowadays. Sometimes you don't know who to turn to and you don't know what's going on, so we think it's important to just get that information out to as many people as possible because even if they aren't experiencing those problems themselves, maybe a friend is or a family member or somebody important to them. Uh, and everybody should be equipped with that knowledge just in case that problem does come up. With everything that we have to deal with nowadays, I feel it's important that people are aware that it's okay to need help and it's okay to get the help you need. Hello, thank you all for having us. Uh, again, my name is Jill Templeton and this is Emma Nash and we are representing the Blaine High School Upstanders United Club. We are honored. <laughs> we are honored to receive the youth award at this event and we have a few words to say. So in today's world, conflicts exist at many volumes from the loudest screaming to the most silent suffering. Sometimes that silence can be even more dire for someone on the inside than anyone around can see. Blaine High School's Upstanders United wants to do simply one thing, to talk. To talk about the things that are tough to find words for, so the things that many people are quiet about. We talk about mental health and self-care and consent and healthy relationships. We aim to break stigma around these topics and get our community informed about the types of conflict that are often under the surface because they are important conflicts to face and we can believe and we believe that we can face it together we want to break the silence and get the conversation going and we thank you guys for listening to us and inviting us here <laughs> we would also like to thank the other members of upstanders who are here Megan Tran, Marnie Osved, Ingrid Osved, Linnea Wirtz, Isabella Creelman, Jerusalem, Jerusalem Sintayu, Nicole Ritz Center, and Liz Stewart. We'd also like to thank Peyton Ives and Justice Galloway Harper, who could sadly not make it tonight, but we still love and appreciate them. So thank you guys for having us. Congratulations. So we're going to start the second half of our awards ceremony by hearing another poem. And I want to share a little, a little something um, different before we, hear, before we hear this poem. So I want to acknowledge that our next poet requested to remain anonymous, but they were willing to let someone else read their poem. And so we are very grateful to Emily Carey with the Whatcom Youth Pride Coalition, another one of tonight's awardees, who has volunteered to give voice to this powerful poem. So Emily, will you join me and read the poem? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And before I read the poem, I just want to say to the author that when I read the poem, it resonated deeply with me, not only as a human being, but as somebody who grew up as a queer and trans youth in Whatcom County. And I just want the author and every queer and trans youth to know that it does get better. <laughs> I remember being jealous of the boys who would flirt with girls on TV and thinking, I couldn't do that because I was a girl. I remember at age nine how I felt about girls, but thinking, no, I like boys too, see? I remember at age 12, finally finding a label that felt right. And what a relief it was to know that I wasn't alone, that I wasn't a freak. I remember being showed a video by my brother. That wasn't very kind. 
and how my mother just laughed along. I remember being told, you're too young. You don't know that. You can't make that type of decision right now. And those remarks hurt more than they should. I remember my mother referring to the community at my school as LGBTQ, as if my trans friends didn't exist. They do. And how she rolled her eyes when I corrected her. I remember June 1st, the first day of Pride Month, and the boy that came up to us and said, that offends me, take it off. When we wore flags and thinking, how does my reality offend you? Why is it so bad that we want to feel good about who we are? I remember the t-shirts that were made just to spite us, the ones with a pride flag covered by a big no symbol. How they paraded in front of us taunting and how weak it made us feel. I remember my parents' indifference about the issues that not only I, but an entire community faced daily, and how baffling it was that they could care so little about others. I remember secondhand stories too. His grandmother, her classmates, their parents, and wishing I could do more, but feeling hopeless. I remember frustration because I don't know when we will be allowed, accepted, free to be us. I remember the tears over attacks on people like us, people like me, and the fact that some are afraid for their lives simply because they love someone. I know we've come so far, but we have so far to go. Although I remember to have hope, I remember all the support in my life, and I remember we are not alone. asked Emily to stay up here with me as I give the next award, and I'm also just sitting with the power of what they just read, so thank you for sharing that with us. Hold on, I have some tissue down here. So if one poses the question of how could we work together to address the isolation so many of our LGBTQ young people are experiencing today, the answer most certainly involves the Whatcom Youth Pride Coalition. This collaboration award is being granted for their remarkable efforts to celebrate LGBTQ youth, promote inclusivity, build awareness, and embrace youth, families, and allies thoughtfully and compassionately. Please join me as we learn more about their work. We're looking for an effort to really build community and find that place where kids have their voice heard, where they're here, and they can be proud of who they are. The coalition is made up of a lot of different people. There's both people from nonprofit work and Northwest Youth Services and the Queer Youth Project, but also educators all over Whatcom County, uh, QSA, Queer Straight Alliance, advisors from all over Whatcom County, and parents like Holly, who have kids that are going to school here in town and want to be an active supporter of their kids and LGBTQ youth. Additionally, we have a lot of support from other foundations and other people in town, so like Whatcom Community Foundation, Bellingham School Foundation, um, Bellingham Public Schools, and other likewise foundations. 40% of homeless youth identify on the LGBTQ spectrum. 
but only 10% of youth nationally on average identify as LGBTQ. So there's a huge disparity in youth homelessness for LGBTQ kiddos. And so we exist primarily to serve those youth and to bring youth both who are in public schools with some support, youth with very little to no support into the same conversations in the same spaces. Seeing that there's this whole other world, mm -hmm. that there are tons of kids out there, even in their own community, um, that are kind of experiencing the same thing, that that's, and making those connections is huge. With youth, it's so important to validate and it's so important to celebrate what they're growing into. And we don't want any youth to feel cut off at such a peak time of growth and transformation. And so celebrating them as they are and how they show up was so important to us and is so key for helping them and what they need. Paige, and I am part of the Whatcom Youth Pride Coalition. Hey pals, will you do me a favor? Will you please stand? I'd really like to recognize the rest of our coalition here tonight. <laughs> and there, there are several folks who are missing. Our coalition includes these two. And I just want to say that this is an effort of volunteers. This is an effort of people who are devoted to loving and protecting LGBTQ plus youth. And I have never been more humbled than I have been to be part of the Whatcom Youth Pride Coalition. I think all of us at the Pride Coalition were stunned to have about 1,500 people show up for Whatcom Youth Pride because honestly, we felt like a fake nonprofit. We were just making it up as we went, and we were led by our hearts, and we were led by youth. And so whether it's, um, whether it's the youth we just heard from in the poem that Emily read, who has faced so much adversity both at school and at home, a youth who we actually know and love, or it's a youth with a ton of support who still hears daily the national discourse about their existence or their worth to us. You know, or it's the young person who's sitting at the table over there with us. Or if it's any one of you who have ever been a queer youth, this is for you. Because there are so many causes that are overlooked but the plight of LGBTQ plus youth is certainly one of them. I think that we have moved on in our dialogue about LGBTQ rights and we have forgotten young people who may have access to language to describe themselves at a much younger age, but communities that are no better prepared to receive them. And so Whatcom Youth Pride is all about those young people, both those who have parents who are advocating for them and those who are still living in the shadows and, and can only see through the newspapers and social media what happened on Sunday in June. So thank you so much for recognizing us, because in recognizing us, you have recognized them. Thank you. I have the distinct honor in this moment to bring up a young person who I had the pleasure of meeting for the first time just a couple of days ago. Um, Nico wrote a beautiful poem, and I'm so pleased to invite you up to stage to share that with us tonight. Thank you, Nico. Hands, open your hands and look at the lines that run like rivers across your skin and know that every palm 
holds their own great estuary. One finger climbing through another, flowing together, intertwined, linked across the world. Love flowing from each palm to each heart. These hands, divergent in color, divergent in love, divergent in life, saying just because a hand is different doesn't mean you can't hold it. Thank you. So our fine, my heart is feeling very full right now. <laughs> our final award tonight, the Healthcare Award, goes to a group whose work transcends healthcare. Migrant and seasonal farm workers play a key role in Whatcom County's economy, but they are often invisible and underserved. Led by Marcela Suarez Diaz, the promotores at CIMAR Health Centers are making it possible for farm workers and their families to access health care, food, and other essential services. The promotores are volunteer community health workers who come from the communities they serve, and they collectively reach over 500 farm workers a year. I'd like to invite them up to the stage to receive their award and for you all to listen and learn along with me. El trabajo comunitario no tiene horario. El trabajo comunitario eh, no es de días de la semana. El programa Promotores de Salud para Trabajadores del Campo, Migrantes y Temporales del Centro Comunitario de Salud CIMAR construye los puentes entre comunidades agrícolas y los servicios comunitarios. Esto se hace a través de un modelo multidimensional de trabajadores comunitarios de salud, quienes pertenecen en su mayoría a las comunidades que servimos. Siendo BIT, culturales y bilingües abren acceso a equidad de salud, brindando servicios apropiados culturalmente a las comunidades agrícolas en los condados de Whatcom y de Sky. Podemos decir que el impacto que se hace a través del programa de promotores trae alivio y esperanza a personas que viven aisladas, que no se conectan con personas extrañas, personas que permanecen por años en el mismo círculo porque tienen desconfianza, porque tienen miedo y no salen. La gente tiene la posibilidad de abrirse con nosotros, nos cuentan cosas que jamás revelarían a alguien diferente de su familia. Y lo hacen porque se sienten seguros. Ellos saben que los promotores son unos aliados. La gente necesita ser escuchada. La gente necesita que alguien se interese por lo que tienen que decir. Eh, hay muchísima soledad en la comunidad agrícola y esto trae otras cosas eh, como consecuencia y es depresión, estrés, y es un estrés basado en, en el aislamiento en el que viven, en que la mayoría de sus familias están lejos de ellos, en que hay persecución. Gracias a ellos hay un plato de comida fresca en la mesa de muchas personas y es triste ver la discriminación que ellos sufren. Y esto es una invitación para que la gente entienda que aquí no hay diferencias. Todos necesitamos dormir, todos necesitamos comer, todos necesitamos ser escuchados de un abrazo, todos somos seres humanos. Good evening, everyone. Volunteer work is altruistic because it's done with love towards others. So it is opposite of selfish, selfish. 
It impacts who surround us responding to a need. The person who volunteers does not do it for a reward. But today, all that silent work that this team has done, it is recognized in public. We only have one life. We invest in it or we waste it. The footprints we live in the world will determine what we have done. With gratitude to who gave us life and to you, Max Moran, because you saw our work. Thank you. And now, I would like to present one of the members of our team who has served for the longest time for Migrant Seasonal Agriculture Worker Promotors Program of CIMAR Community Health Centers. His name is Gilberto. <laughs> he would like to thank in his language. He represents the Mixteco community in Whatcom County. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> sa tomar en cuenta te que ni casa ni favor a candia ni trabajo casa Gilberto say thank you i never expect this recognition god bless you thank you enjoy this evening thank you too. Thank you, Marion, for the tissue. I'm trying to make it last. <laughs> it's my pleasure now to shift our program inward and to invite my amazing staff member, Addie Candib, our community, community engagement manager. <laughs> who has been instrumental in making this whole evening happen. She's going to come up and share with you a little bit more about the role of the Dispute Resolution Center and our impact here in the community. So please join with me as we hear from Addie. Thank you. Wow, there is remarkable work taking place in our community. Tonight's award winners are addressing some of the most important issues of our time. Climate, poverty and homelessness, incarceration, mental health, immigration, these are also some of the most divisive issues that we face as a community. And at the Whatcom Dispute Resolution Center, we are uniquely positioned to see firsthand that community conversations about these complex topics are characterized by mistrust, incivility, and polarization. I wonder if anyone in the room tonight, any of you, 
has experienced or been witness to conflict in this way? <laughs> Weekly, the WDRC receives requests for help from groups throughout the community. And over the last few years, we've seen a marked increase in the number of requests we've received for help from savvy and experienced community leaders who are seeing conflict at levels they've never experienced before. And they're at a loss for what to do and where to turn, and so they're coming to us. Since the beginning of this year alone, we've received over 50 requests for our facilitation services. These conflicts around issues of workplace culture, land use, natural resources, accessibility, language, policing, they feel intractable and they're not going away. These organizations, schools, government agencies, nonprofits, grassroots organizations, places of worship, they need our help. Because of your support, we're able to answer that call with skills and services that we've refined over the last several decades. And with the neutral position that we occupy, we're able to support our fellow community members in conflict, to guide them toward the heart of the matter, and to make space for them to problem solve together. As each of the award winners tonight has exemplified, the solution to these profoundly challenging conflicts is about empathy. It's about listening with intention. It's about letting go of assumptions, taking responsibility for our own actions, learning to see the humanity in one another. The interests that underlie these polarizing conflicts are fundamental to who we are, power, identity, belonging, love. So the solution is about patience and openness. We need to remind ourselves how to stay present. We need to build our skills in listening. We need to remember we're all connected. Nearly 400 people so far this year have participated in community conversations that we held space for. And while these conversations have often been difficult and painful, we have seen people transformed from antagonists into advocates, from critics into collaborators. We are the community's go-to resource for resolving these types of conflicts. For 27 years, we've been holding space for families and friends co-workers and colleagues to have the conversations they need to have and to grow from the opportunity that is conflict. This work has never been more important. So tonight, I'm asking you to join with us as we lead our community in creating a culture that is shaped by curiosity and by civility. We're so grateful for the support you've already provided tonight in so many ways, and now we're gonna ask you to magnify that impact for today and into the future. Mm -hmm.